mate. Take that fag out of your mouth. I'm going to hear you coughing four streets away. <laughs> I can see the house vibrating from the top of the road. <laughs> A man has to have some pleasures in life. <laughs> Did you bring home any fags with you? I've been rolling my own dog in since morning. <laughs> Honestly, the state your lungs must be in. They must be like a pair of empty coal sacks by now. <laughs> How long have you been smoking? Uh, let's see. I started just after I left school, so I was eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll mean... Sixty glorious years. Do you know how much smoking that represents? I don't know. Let's work it out. Now, a fag is about three inches long, a packet of 20, that's uh, five foot. How many do you smoke a day? Forty. Forty? <laughs> that is ten foot a day you're getting through. <laughs> that's the equivalent of one fag twice as long as you. <laughs> right, that's, uh, do you realise that you are smoking 3,650 feet of fag per year? Oh, that is horrifying. That's nearly three quarters of a mile. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? Three quarters of a mile per year for 60 years, for 60 halves and 15 holes. <laughs> 13 holes. 15 holes. That is incredible. <laughs> Since you was an eight and a half, you have smoked the equivalent of a fag 45 miles long. <laughs> It's from here to Reading, or halfway up the M1 to Coventry. No, it's not. You don't smoke them all. You can't count the dog ends. Well, that's even worse. You've thrown away a dog end five miles long. <laughs> You're a pollution hazard all on your own, you are. Oh, I enjoy smoking. It's never done me any harm. <laughs> Honestly, you must have a lining of nicotine an inch and a half thick on the sides of your lungs, and have a year and the sides will be touching. Do yourself a favour, Dad. Give it up. Oh, no, Harold, I couldn't. I'm too old to change me ways. At my age, life without a good old drag and a cough wouldn't be worth living. Yeah, wait a minute. There's a mobile x-ray unit down the road. I passed it on the way home. Why don't you go and have an x-ray? I don't have no x-rays. Why not? They might find something wrong with me. <laughs> well, that's the whole point, and they could do something about it. No, if there's something wrong with me, I don't want to know about it. Oh, that is ridiculous. I mean, that is burying your head in the sand, that is. But there's something wrong with you, and I'm going to go away. It'll just get worse. There's nothing wrong with me. You don't know that, not till you've had a checkup. There's nothing wrong with me, I tell you. Well, there's nothing to be frightened about in having an x-ray, then, is there? I know you. You want them to find something wrong with me, don't you? That's a terrible thing to say. Yes, you do. So I'll go to the hospital and they'll keep me there and I'll never come back. That's what you want, isn't it? Look, that's what I wanted. I could have had your head x-rayed and had you taken away years ago. <laughs> Look, it's for your own good. Besides, everybody should have one. I'm going to have an x-ray. What are you having one for? What's the matter with you? Well, nothing the matter with me. Well, what are you having one for, then? Wasting public money. That's why the national health stamps keep going up. If less people use the hospital, there wouldn't be such a shortage of nurses. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Look, the whole point of preventative medicine is to find out if people are ill. And the only way you can find out if people are ill is to send them to the hospital to find out if they are ill in the first place. <laughs> or not. Whichever the case may be. Exactly. And the more people you look at, the more people you're going to find out are ill. Oh, I know that. That's why the hospitals is overcrowded. Yeah, but... They wouldn't be if you can't prevent disease. The X-ray don't prevent it, it's looking for it. Now, leave well alone. If people are ill and don't know it, what's the point of depressing them? It'll only make them ill. Yeah, but... <laughs> Look, are you coming or not? No, I ain't got TB. I didn't say you have, but you've got a nasty cough, haven't you? I've always had that. That's not TB, that's me lungs! <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're coming for a checkup. First thing in the morning, you're going to put on some clean underwear. You're going to have that skinny little chest of yours x rayed, all right? Oh, I don't have to put on clean underwear, do I, Harold? Well, you've got to give the x rays a chance to get through, haven't you? <laughs> I don't want to be x rayed, Harold. There's nothing wrong with me. I know there isn't. I'm as healthy as anyone. <laughs> <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have come for the mass x-rays. Mass x-rays? You told me it was just one on the chest. I'm not having it all over. I'm all... <laughs> I'm not having them strapping me down and shooting all that electricity to me. It's not natural. I'd turn into a monster. What do you mean, turn? <laughs> I must apologise for my father. He has been seeing too many of them late night Frankenstein pictures. But nobody's going to strap you down if you behave yourself. Mass in this case means uh, everybody. It's just one tiny little x-ray, that's all. I do beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. There's nothing to worry about, sir. I can assure you it does you no harm at all. Now, we'll fill in one of these cards. Name? Steptoe. Albert Edward Ladysmith Steptoe. <laughs> Age? 63. You liar! He's 69! Why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> How can you be sensitive about your age at your time of life? 69. Address? The Muse Cottage, Oil Drum Lane, Shepherd's Bush. Are you suffering from any illness? No, I've never had a day's illness in my life. I'm as fit as a fiddle. What are you doing tonight? <laughs> I do beg your pardon. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure he didn't mean anything. He does, don't you worry. <laughs> Listen, you mind your manners. Well, right, answer the questions. Do you cough at all? No, never. I see. And when were you last x-rayed? I've never been x in my life. There's never been no need. There's nothing wrong with me. Good. Have you received any other medical treatment? Yeah. I had some white powder squirted down my trousers when I come out of the trenches. <laughs> well, I don't think we need mention that. Take that card through to the nurse. I'll wait for him. Oh, good. Name? Uh, Steptoe. Harold Albert Kitchener. <laughs> Age? I'm uh, 34. He's 41. <laughs> 31! Which is it, 34, 39 or 41? 39. Nearly 40. You get an x-ray on your nose if you don't keep it off of my phone. Address? Same as him, unfortunately. <laughs> Are you suffering from any illness? Uh, no, not to my knowledge. I, I do keep myself in pretty good physical condition. Any cough? There is a slight irritation of the bronchial tracheae first thing in the morning, but it's nothing to go worried about. Any sputum? <laughs> Pardon? Gold watches. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> have you been x-rayed before? No. Yes, you have. Two years ago when the horse kicked you in the cobblers. <laughs> <laughs> He can still enjoy himself. Look, please, there's something that's wrong with that disgusting mixed company. Ah, oh, that's a medical lady. She's heard worse than that. I think you'd better write it down. x i raid Gentiles. <laughs> Nothing else? No. Well, I think that's all. Take that through to the nurse. Through that. Come on, you. <laughs> Well, just go and tell her I was 69 for. I was doing all right there. Tasty piece, isn't she? She's got TB. Has she? Two beauties. <laughs> I like nurses. They're now mucking about with them stone bonkers, they are. They'd have to be to go out with you. What do you want to have to tell about that horse for? I was just on the point of asking her out tonight. Well, ask that one, then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come on, let's get over with. Take off your jackets, please. Remove all metal objects. We're not wearing armor, love. <laughs> You'll have to take your watch off. <laughs> <laughs> hey! What's the game? <laughs> the metal bits will show up on the x-ray. Stand over here, please. Stand there. Hey, what's going on? Where are we going? That's it, Mrs. Jobby's head off. Right. Don't move. Deep breath in. Yeah. Don't move. Deep breath in. 
Hold it. <laughs> Thank you. Get dressed, please. <laughs> Is that all? That's all. You mean we're not going to get a cup of tea? You're so smart, you're going to give us a cup of tea. Please. <laughs> right. Don't move. Deep breath in. Hold it. Thank you. Get dressed, please. <laughs> we'll write and let you know the result. Can't bother. Nothing wrong with me. Good morning. Harold. What? I'm frightened. What for? You've had it. I know. That's what I'm frightened of. <laughs> Supposing there is something wrong with me. <laughs> the West London Chest Clinic. How oh, I go. <laughs> <laughs> The West London Chest Clinic. Aye. Oh, that's probably the uh, results of our x-rays. Hey, old step toe, that's you. I don't want it. Oh, I'll hold it. You open yours first. Oh, God. Oh, all right. Dear sir, we're happy to inform you that your recent chest x-ray is completely clear and shows no abnormalities. There you are, nothing to worry about. Go on, open it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> what is it? Your recent chest X-ray was unsatisfactory due to a technical fault. An appointment has been made for you at the West London Hospital for a further X-ray. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> I'm dangerously ill. <laughs> It's all your fault, you and your bleeding X-rays. I was all right after then. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. X-rays cannot give you TB. Anyway, don't say you've got it. It just says, oh, unsatisfactory due to a technical fault. They always say that, so as not to frighten you. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel the life draining out of me. Harold! Oh, come on, Dad. Come on, Dad. You mustn't panic now. Let us be rational about this. Now, let us assume the worst. You've got TB. <laughs> well, that's nothing to worry about. I mean, I mean, it's not like it used to be. It's not like it was in your day. I mean, with all these modern drugs now, you can't be cured in no time at all. I won't. I've had it. I probably won't last a week out. Oh, look, Dad, you mustn't talk like that. I mean, it's just a couple of months in a sanatorium. You'll be as right as rain. Carol, no, don't let them send me away. I want to die in my own bed. Please, Harold, promise me you won't let them send me away. Yeah, all right, I'll have... Oh, shut up, for God's sake. Nobody's going to send you away. I could never get that lucky. <laughs> What does it say he has to go to the hospital? It says, tomorrow morning at... Here. Wait a minute. What? This ain't mine, it's yours. Pardon? H-A-K Steptoe. That's you. They put him in the wrong envelopes. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Don't want make a mistake like that. Hey, old Steptoe. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm all right. There's nothing wrong with me. I told you. I'm as fit as a fiddle. Where's me fags? <laughs> What's wrong with you? TP. I've got TP. Consumption. Yeah, you haven't got it. It only says that your examination was unsatisfactory due to a technical fault. They always say that. They never tell you the truth. I'm ill. I've had it. You haven't got it, a young lad like you. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh -huh. 
I got a cough. You call that a cough? <laughs> That's a cough. Oh, for God's sake, shut up. Will you? <gasps> Did you hear that? My lungs must be like a pair of lace curtains. <laughs> now I, come to, I can't get my breath. I can't get my breath, Dad. I come to think of it. I ain't been feeling very well lately. I feel so tired all the time. That's too much of the other. <laughs> no, it's not. It's your fault. You never looked after me when I was a kid. I never had any decent grub. This rotten, stinking, damp house. What chance did I have? It lowered my resistance. It's your fault. You had the best food money could buy. The money? You never had any money. You spent it all in a pub. With me standing outside all night in the rain. With a bottle of lemonade in one hand and an arrow biscuit in the other. <laughs> That's why I've got it. You haven't got it? Yes, I have. I've, I've lost a lot of weight lately. Oh, Shad, you've been on a diet, haven't you? Trying to get into those velvet trousers you bought. No, no, it's, it's, it's more than that. It's, it's just been falling off me. I'm wasting away. Lack of energy. That is another symptom. You've had that since you was born. Look, look Dad, Dad, please, I am frightened. Don't come too near to me. It's catching. <laughs> Dad, I'm your son. I'm your flesh and blood. Well, there's no point in both of us having it, is there? Well, got to be hard enough on me running the business by myself when you're away. But I'm going to manage. I shall be on my own. What's going to happen to me? That's what I want to know. I'll have to go on the assistance. I was if and I hadn't enough to put up with. What a terrible thing to happen to me at my time of life. What about me? It's me that's rotten well ill. But that's your fault. You should have looked after yourself. I ain't done nothing and I'm the one that's got to be left all alone. Well, I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> I would never have believed it. Here's me, gasping me life away. And all you could think about is yourself. I don't believe that there is another soul in the world who can be as callous as you are. Oh, I won't forget this. I shall carry the memory of this day to my dying grave. Where are you going? To my grave. <laughs> are you bed? You only just got up. Look, I'm a very sick man. I've got, I've got to get as much rest as I can. I've got to conserve my energies for the battle what lies ahead. I shall see you in the morning. God willing. <laughs> Take it off, or I'll stuff it down your throat. Man's entitled to protect himself. Here, have you been drinking out of that? No, why? That's my cup, it's a new one, that's yours. I smashed all the others. <laughs> Here, eat that sausage, you touched it. What's all this? What? All this bits of sticking plaster on my knife and my fork, on my plate. <laughs> That's ours, we won't get them mixed up. I marked your cup, your plate, your knife, your fork, your spoon. I'm not using them. I moved all the stuff I use out into the kitchen. I'll move out into the stable if you like. You keep away from that horse. <laughs> Anything happens to her, we've had it. Nothing's gonna happen to her, for God's sake. Well, why don't you paint a yellow cross on the front door and I'm done with it? I'll carry this round with me if you like. Unclean, unclean, give away, give away. Stop it, Gerald. Sit down. You mustn't, you mustn't overdo it. You're quite right. I mustn't tire myself out. Are my cheeks flushed? They look all right to me. Well, aren't you going to get dressed? Aren't you going to go to work? How can I go to work? I'm a sick man. What about your poor horse catching it? Oh, she can wear a mask. The fresh air would do you good. 
You just want to get me out of the house, don't you? So you can have it fumigated. In any case, I've got to go to the hospital this morning for my x-ray. Aren't you going to eat your breakfast? No. I don't seem to have any appetite lately. That is another symptom. Oh, God. <laughs> Go on, eat it. It'll be all right. Different from him carbolic. It's a shame to waste them. No, thanks. I'm not hungry. <laughs> How are you feeling this morning, anyway? I wondered when you'd ask. It's comforting to know you're concerned. I'm not well. I'm not well at all. I broke out into a cold sweat last night. That's another symptom. I saw the sun rise this morning. It was beautiful. <laughs> I smelt the rain as well as it dried on the pavements. Is that another symptom? <laughs> Everything seems so clear. They do say that your senses is heightened when you haven't got long to go. You see things in a new light. Everything is so beautifully, beautifully clear. I don't... I don't suppose I shall see another spring. <coughs> I shall miss England in the spring. What's my favourite time? I weighed myself again just now. Do you know I've lost another four and a half pounds since yesterday? <laughs> You're not wearing your gum boots, are you? <laughs> oh, for God's sake, pull yourself together. You're carrying on like some bleeding Victorian poet. <laughs> Put this in a safe place for me, will you? What's that? It's my will. I've left everything to you with a small bequest for the Labour Party. There's no need to make out your will, Harold. They'll cure you. You said so yourself. They work wonders these days. Yes, I know they do. But I've got a premonition. My time has come. Oh, it's a shame, really. There's so much to do, so much to see, and so little time left. Don't be sad, Dad. I'm not sad. Look, I'm smiling. <laughs> Oh, well, I better get off to the hospital. I said I'd be there within the hour. Uh, I better take my uh, pyjamas with me. They'll uh, probably rush me straight into the sanatorium. Goodbye, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't suppose I shall be back here again. I'll come and visit you, Harold. If it's not too far. <laughs> I would... I would like that. Don't worry about me, Dad. I am at peace with myself. As Dr Johnson said, it is amazing how clear a man's mind becomes when he knows he is facing execution in a few hours' time. Oh, Harold! <laughs> I have no regrets. Je ne regret ne rien. <laughs> My only worry is in leaving you. Oh, no, 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 no tears, Dad, no tears. Chin up. I want to remember you with a smile on your face. Smile, smile. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> Give my last respects to the horse. <coughs> Everybody down the Skinner's arms. Goodbye, Dad. You think they'll send a bleeding ambulance for me? That's the least thing they could have done.
dear dad, by the time you read this, I shall be dead. <laughs> Unless you can't wait and you've opened it already. <laughs> I hope you are not too distraught at my demise. You can rest happy in the knowledge that we will meet again when you too are cold by the great rag and bone man in disguise. Because the dark spells will be all that long. <laughs> I would like to be buried with my mum. And I hope that you will take more care of it when there's two of us in there than you ever did when she was in there on her tot. <laughs> I hereby bequeath an annual sum not exceeding 15% of my total estate to be donated to Harold Wilson in his capacity as leader of the Labour Party of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and his dominions beyond the sea. <laughs> I further bequeath uh, this is the bit. all the rest of my worldly goods to you. This is to include my post office book and my half of Stepto and Son, here and after referred to as the business. I further bequeath to you personally a great bunch of fives right up to Utah. <laughs> Harold! Yeah, Harold! You couldn't wait, could you? Now you'll get nothing now. I thought you was at the hospital. Of course I've been to the hospital. There's nothing wrong with me. There was nothing on your x-ray. Nah, and the woman last time had this bloody silly stupid thing. What? This thing that you made me wear with my name and address on it in case I got lost. <laughs> I've been wearing it so long I forgot all about it. Look at it. It makes me look like a stray dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Harold, but you're all right. That's the main thing. There's nothing wrong with you. Welcome home, son. This is stone cold. I'll go and make you some more. Well, I don't bother. Oh, I'm tired out. I was up all last night worrying about it. I've got a bed. You can't go to bed. Why not? I burned it. <laughs> <laughs> I burned all your clothes as well. <laughs> my best suit! My, my crushed strawberry velvet trousers! And my, my see-through shirt! You little killer! Oh, yeah.